This is the Magnum Energy MMS 1012, the model number. Actually, the model number on this is R MMS 1012. R for refurbished, because I bought a refurbished inverter. But Magnum Energy is known to, in the solar market, to be of top quality equipment. So, since I'm wanting to set up a renewable energy system that is um, as commercial grade as I can afford. Um, I went with this refurbished inverter here and this is a thousand watt inverter and I want to kind of show you before I install this in the travel trailer I wanted to kind of show you uh, the setup here and how this is wired and um, just to give you an idea of how I'm going to wire this and then I'll show you after I put it in uh, the travel trailer how exactly it's wired. This isn't going to be anything, you're not going to miss anything when I put this in the travel trailer. It's going to be wired basically the same. This will be different. That's temporary. That's just for testing, just to make sure that the inverter works um, so that before I install it in the travel trailer, um, I know that it works. So basically what I have here is starting with the battery bank here. These are interstate Let's see, GC2 XHD is what these are. These are normally about 155 a piece, and I got these for 116 a piece. Um, just by calling around to some different battery places around and kind of seeing what what they would what they could do for me on price, uh, since I was buying multiple batteries, so. Got a steal of a deal on these. I think the grand total was four ninety three with um, tax and everything. So what I've done with these four is I've wired two batteries in series by going from the positive to the negative. So those two batteries are connected. And then I've gone sitting and done the same thing over here. These two batteries are connected from the positive to the negative on this battery. And then what I've done is connected the two, and what that does when you wire these in series, if you're, if, if you're not familiar, you may already know, but that takes these, these are six volt batteries. So when you wire in series like that, it doubles the voltage. So you basically end up with one battery out of these, you know, com combining these two together, you end up with one 12 volt battery is what you get. So, so with those two batteries wired in series, I have two 12 volt batteries. And then... I wire them in parallel, the two the two sets of batteries. So I go from the negative here over to the negative on this battery. And then I go from the positive on that battery over to the positive on that battery. And that gives me one big battery out of these four batteries. Uh, oh, and by the way, when you when you wire them in parallel like that, the voltage stays the same, but you double the amperage. So these are 232 amp hour batteries. So um, wired in parallel, wired in basically wired in series and in parallel, I get 12 volts, 464 amp hours. So I've just made a bigger battery basically out of these four batteries. And then what you do is since you have one big battery, you come off of the negative on this end and you come off of the positive on that end and that goes to follow the cable around the inverter and so the inverter you can see there just has a positive and a negative on it from each end of the battery bank and that gives power to the inverter also um, it's important that you get the right cable so uh, one cheap way to do that these cables you know if you buy a cable like this it could cost you twelve dollars on online or if you order it or whatever you know a pre-made cable and so I just made my own cables I went to my local uh, electric supply and bought twelve feet of this this is single lot cable is what they call it that's the gauge and about twelve feet of that and that's enough to wire up this battery and wire to the inverter it's a it's a it's just enough and, and then I bought these lugs here um, 
and these just have a 5 16 inch hole that goes right over the battery post there. I bought those at Napa Auto Parts. And they were like 84 cents a piece. Um, so I got 12 of those and uh, just made these cables. Um, wasn't really too difficult. So um, uh, I'll actually link to the video that I used to build these cables, the one that I kind of went off. I did a little bit of research and, and I'll, I'll link to that video and you can see exactly how I built them uh, in more detail. But in, so on the positive, so you're coming off of the positive side of the battery here, you have to have some kind of a disconnect in between the battery and the inverter there. So this disconnect is basically it's an auto disconnect. You need to have either a fuse or a breaker. This is a breaker and the reason I went with a breaker is because if it flips then I don't have to replace a $16 fuse. I can just flip the switch. You can see hopefully on this side see there's a switch. So when you flip that switch on see now I've closed the breaker and that is um, sending power to the battery. If I switch that off, now there's no power going to the inverter. I'm sorry, not the battery, the inverter. So you have to, that's important. And that's a 150 amp um, breaker there. And the reason I went with a 150 amp breaker is because this cable is able to handle 170 amps. So by going with a breaker that will trip at 150 amps, that protects my wires from igniting on fire, basically, or melting or causing a fire, you know, getting too hot and causing a fire. So um, that's the purpose of that safety measure, and it is absolutely necessary. You always want to have some kind of a disconnect in between all of your components. So in between your battery bank and your inverter in this case. Now. Uh, this wiring, this crazy wiring here. Um, what, what you have here is this, you know, you've got your, your DC power coming in from the battery bank. And then here I have, um, you, have uh, you have an AC in. And the reason that you have an AC in, that's what this is here. The AC in is um, for two purposes. Uh, number one, this inverter has a charger built into it that will charge the batteries if you plug this in. And two, you can also plug this in if you don't want to use your battery power and you have access to shore power or a generator or something. You can plug this in and you can run uh, your uh, you know, electricity off of that. It'll run off of this first um, before it'll drain the batteries. So two, two reasons there. So this is basically, it's the AC in, and um, I've got that wired in here. You can see these three wires here. So um, there's, a, there's a positive and a negative and a neutral. And so that's the AC in. Now the AC out, which I currently have wired to this outlet here, and again, that was just for testing. It was just temporary. Um, so I have that wired to this outlet and uh, I'm actually going to, and that's, it's got the same thing. It's got the, um, ground neutral and then the hot power wire. So, um, I'm actually, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, uh, take this off and I'm going to wire on the way that I'm going to wire this into my travel trailer. I think the most elegant way to do it is to get an automatic transfer switch so that when you're plugged in to shore power or a generator it automatically uses that and if you're if the only power available is from the inverter it'll automatically switch to that so um, but I'm not going to do that um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off and I'm going to wire on a female plug, female end plug, basically, you know, just like that, but but it's going to be the end of, a, of an extension cable. And I'm going to wire that onto this side, basically just like I've done here. I've wired this extension cable on for the AC in. I'm going to wire the other end of an extension cable on for the AC out. And um, 
what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plug in the RV, the regular, um, yeah, I think it's like a 50 amp uh, cord that comes off and then you buy the adapter for it and you can plug it into 110. Um, I'm just going to put the adapter on and, and basically plug the RV into this. And that's and then and then I'll be powering the the RV off of the inverter and the batteries. And if I want to plug into shore power, then I can you know unplug from from this and plug into shore power. And so uh, it's just a little simpler way of doing it. The only thing that you need to be aware of when you do that is that you have to um, disable the converter that is uh, charging the, the normal onboard battery. Uh, every RV has a battery and it's got a converter on it, an electrical system that charges, the, charges that battery. And so if you're, if you're, um, if you're just running um, you know, off of this and charging that other battery or, or, or you know, even, even further, maybe if you're creating a loop uh, back to these batteries, uh, you're actually you're eventually you'll drain these batteries because you're losing voltage uh, on that loop as it goes around it's generating a little bit of heat and you're losing a little bit of voltage so eventually it'll kill it so you have to um, disable that part of the converter for me it's just a, th a 20 amp fuse that I pull out and when I pull that fuse out it doesn't charge the batteries anymore so it just it just uh, sends the power to the lights and and uh, and to the AC outlets in the trailer. So uh, hopefully that all makes sense. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And I'm going to go ahead and install this, and um, I'll show you what my install looks like when that's done.